Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be talking all things overcoming sales objections today. If you are struggling to close sales after you've already spent 30, 45 minutes on a consultation with a potential client and you're sick of it, I wanna walk you through the most common sales objections that I hear all the time after over four and a half years as a full-time online coach, how to overcome them in a practical, authentic way. And I'm not gonna lie, we're going into a lot of detail today. This is gonna be a long one, so let's buckle in and dive into it. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. I got my start in the coaching space as a health coach and a private yoga instructor, and I've seen since become a full-time business mentor for women in the online coaching space for the last four and a half plus years. And sales objections is something that comes across my desk all the time. In fact, I spent like an entire hour today talking to one of my clients about this exact topic in a very like real world application sense. So I have a lot of value to walk y'all through today. And I do want to say this is going to be a longer training than normal. I have gotten into a trend recently and I'm going to make sure that this like episode or this training is time stamped to filth. Thank you so much to my editor. So if you want to skip my little diatribe here and get straight into the training, love you so much. I will see you there. But if you want to hear a little update, I've gotten into a little bit of a trend recently with these trainings, which I have been doing every single week for years, like four plus years now where the trainings have gotten a little bit shorter, a little bit more surface level than I would like them to be. And to be completely honest, I am feeling pulled. I'm feeling called to dive a little bit deeper to make these trainings a lot more in depth and something that you can really like sit down with a pen and paper, take some notes and walk away feeling kind of like you had a little bit of a mentorship session with me, where if you click on the training and you can relate to what I'm covering, you can walk away knowing that you have applicable, like tangible information and value to go off of. And it's not just like a super quick little educational moment. So that is what we're going to be going for. That may end up impacting my posting schedule just a little bit so I can make sure I'm increasing the quality and not just focusing on quantity of my content. But that remains to be seen right now. I am pre-filming before a month long Europe trip. And that is two weeks after I got back from a three month trip to Utah. So the digital nomad life is it's on like we're, we're living it fully and I'm keeping you guys educated every week by doing a lot of pre-recording. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy a little bit more of an in-depth training. And today there is so much to cover. So I have my hot tea. I'm ready to go. I've got the wrist stack on. We're going to be jingling, jangling. Let's get into it. Okay. So the first thing I want to address in today's training is the fact that when I listen to the advice that comes from a lot of business coaches, mentors, experts, whatever in the online space, I hear a lot of really impractical advice. And my whole career is based on educating real potential business owners that maybe have never been in online sales before. They've never pitched something that they created and priced themselves, much less dealt with somebody giving them objections when you've maybe given it all you've had on a consultation. So while this is not going to be a sales call training, we're gonna kind of skip to the end of that call and get right into the objections portion. I want you to take away from today the fact that I am not here to give you advice that you're not gonna use. That sounds good and sounds powerful and sexy, but is really way too intimidating for new business owners. And also is the type of advice that can ruin your potential relationship with your client or your lead, right? I focus really heavily in my business and with my clients on authenticity, on relationship maintenance, and today's gonna be no different. I really wanna make it so clear that the advice you're gonna get from me today is stuff you can actually use. It's not going to make somebody on the other end of the Zoom call feel pressured or icky, and it's not gonna make you feel gross either. I think that sales should be something that's kind of fun, a fun challenge, but mainly just a fun way to get to meet people that are interested in working with you and hiring you, and I think that is so powerful. So that's where I'm coming from today, and we're gonna dive into the objective I'm going to be covering and how to address those. So get a pen, get some paper, and I'm stoked to dive in. So when you are on a sales call, you're going to get through the whole portion. Tell me about yourself. Tell me what your goals are. No matter what your niche is, you're going to get to a point where you've given details of your offer. You've said the price and you kind of get to this place of like, okay, how do we make this work for you? Let's talk about, you know, getting you enrolled. Like, what do we need to do? Like I said, this isn't a sales call training, but you get to the point in the call where it's decision-making time. Now there are two sales 
people's objections that when I hear an objection, this is what I hear 99% to like 100% usually of the time. Number one objection is I can't afford it. I don't have the money. That's too expensive. The second objection I hear all the time is time related. Either I don't have the time or now is not the right time, but either way, it's a timeline centric response. Now, some people that you're on a call with are gonna come out and say these things directly. They're gonna say, I can't afford it. I don't have time. It's not the right time. But most people are going to kind of give you a little grimace when you say the price or when you say the timeline or whatever it may be. And they're kind of going to shut down energetically. You're going to notice a little bit of a shift in how much they're listening, the eye contact they're making. And then they're going to say something along the lines of this all sounds great, but I need to think about it. Now you may hear the objection laid out plainly. Somebody may say exactly what it is, but most of the time this person in their mind is going to be thinking, I need to get off the phone away from this person before they can pressure me into something that I'm too intimidated to do, right? And this is what I want you to remember about all of these things that you may be hearing, the direct objections, I need to think about it, whatever it may be. I truly believe that all of these things are true only about 10% of the time. I'm gonna give you my interpretation, what I hear when a potential client says to me any of these things so that you can get in the headspace of really hearing what's at the core of what somebody says. So first things first, when somebody says, I just need to think about it, like it all sounds great, but I just need to think about it, talk about it with my partner. Again, 10% of the time, that really is true. And I have some amazing clients that come back to me after, you know, a week or whatever it may be. And we get back on the call. They're like, great. I do want to do it. Not only that, I want to do an even shorter payment plan than I thought, or I want to pay in full, like let's dive in. So that can be true. But most of the time, that's not how I interpret that response. What I hear when somebody says I need to think about it is something has freaked me out. I'm feeling super uncertain and or pressured or intimidated, and I need to get off the call. And usually wrapped up in there is I don't feel like I can afford it or I'm scared financially or I don't feel like I have time or like I'm scared on a scheduling situation, but I'm too embarrassed to say that or I don't feel like bringing that to the table. So I'm going to wrap this up and run away from my computer as quickly as possible by saying that I need to think about it and hopefully I can get off the call. When I hear somebody say I can't afford it, how I interpret that again, about 10% of the time that really is true. Somebody really, really, really may not have the money to invest, in which case I will tell you exactly how we handle that and how we accommodate. But most of the time when somebody says that's way too much money, like I can't afford it, what they're really saying is number one, I don't believe in myself to be able to see my return on investment, whatever that is, whether it's with my health or my business or my finances, whatever I'm investing in, I don't believe in my own ability to create that ROI. So to me, it's wasted money before I even spend it. Another thing that may be going through their head is maybe they've spent money on something like this before and it didn't work out. So again, they don't believe in their ability to make whatever change they're looking to make because they've spent the money before and it didn't work, but they didn't spend it with you. That's not your problem or your fault. It's just your responsibility to overcome that objection to the best of your ability. But that is what I hear when somebody says, I really can't afford it. And again, that may be true. The money just may not be there, but we will get to assessing which one of these options it is in just a second. When somebody says, I do not have the time. The thing that I hear is number one, I don't want to spend the time dedicated in this direction because it's scary. Again, I don't believe in my ability to make these changes and I'm scared that I'm going to waste the time I input into this thing and I'm never going to get it back and I'm not going to see a change. And just like our money objection, usually that stems from I've tried something like this before. I've tried to solve this problem. I could not do it and I don't believe in my own ability to make that change. So it's a lot of like fear and lack of self-belief. And then of course I have my clients that literally, literally have, you know, four kids, a full-time job. Their husband also works full-time on the opposite shift and they literally have no time. And again, we'll get into how to decipher which actual answer or response that we're dealing with in a little bit. But the point of this section of the training is when you hear an objection, you need to first remember that what you hear isn't always exactly what is meant. There's a lot of times, almost always, more beneath the surface. So we get into the management of the objections, starting with truly understanding what we're dealing with, with the objection, what our potential client actually means. So let's get into addressing these objections. And if I'm looking at my notes right, we're gonna go through five steps total. So you guys stick around, I will timestamp each of those steps. So step one of this whole addressing objections process with the ultimate goal of signing 
this potential client in the original offer that you pitched is to address and understand the actual underlying motivation and readiness to change. The truth of the matter is not every single person that you speak with on a sales call or a consultation is ever gonna be ready to actually work with you. I get people all the time that book in with me and they'll even go through the full application process and they know from the get-go, you know, from the jump, from applying to speaking with me for the first time, they're not ready to invest in anything. They have no intention of doing so because they legitimately don't have the money, the time, or they just aren't there yet, but they're just curious to meet me. They're trying to build trust. Like they really just want to see what I'm all about. And that's okay. I understand that's part of the process, but I need to be pretty good at understanding and recognizing when that is the case as early on in the call as possible. So there's a couple of ways where you can identify somebody's readiness to change their motivation. And it's really looking at their energy through a few different stages of of that consultation process. The easiest thing to do happens before you ever get on a consultation and it's having an application or an intake form in place. So you can actually put on that application, like how, you know, a readiness to change scale, how ready is somebody to change? So on my application, I actually have like a one through 10, how ready are you to, you know, build your business in my case and get your business off the ground and put in the work, et cetera, et cetera. And I have people rate themselves. I also have them indicate on that intake form when their ideal time to get Get started would be. So I really bring to the table this reality that we are going to be talking about mentorship. We are going to be talking about start dates. And before I ever get on the call, I have a little bit of a view and a take on how ready somebody is to change. And I've had them indicate to me when they would like to get started if they do decide to move forward. So there's a lot more of a reality check there. And I have an idea of that as do they before we ever get on the call. And if somebody's really, really unserious and they're really not into that, they will get to those questions on the intake form and they will not even book in with you. And that's a good thing because that would have been like a complete waste of time. So say you don't have an application or say you can't really get a good feel for somebody's energy or readiness to change based on those intake forms. The next thing is just to listen to the person on the call. I learned so much about my potential clients just by opening the floor to them to speak about their story, what they want to build in their business. And then I just sit back and listen and take a few mental notes. And I can generally tell somebody's enthusiasm or motivation just by listening to them speak and even asking them about their goals. Somebody who has a very clear picture of what they want is somebody that is generally a lot more ready to make a change and move in that direction. So some of it also comes down to conversation and making a decision in your own mind about how ready somebody is and how motivated they are to make a change before you actually get to the part of the call where you're specifically pitching your offer. The important thing to remember here is that people are on a spectrum. Some people are very, very close to that edge of just like diving into whatever it is they want to change. If it's something about their health, their business, et cetera, et cetera, right? Their life. Other people are totally on the other end of the spectrum. They are simply curious and they were brave enough to get on a call with you, but that does not mean that they are ready to make a change. They may know that and they may have predetermined, I'm not gonna sign up for anything today or it might take the slightest inconvenience, like the slightest little thought that, oh, that's a little bit more expensive than I thought it was gonna be, or, oh, that's like a little bit longer and more of a time investment than I thought it was going to be. For people that are not high on the readiness to change scale, like the littlest deterrence is going to majorly throw them off course. So just remember to be picking up on and making some judgments about readiness to change through like direct responses or context clues as early on in the call process as possible. Okay, step two in our process of addressing objectives on a sales call, you need to address the true underlying issue. So using motivational interviewing, using like tactical questions that you have kind of in your repertoire that you can pull from in the moment, you want to understand, is there really a lack of money or just a lack of self-belief? Is there just a fear around money, but there is money there to spend? AKA, is it kind of like a mindset thing that needs to be worked through? Is there truly a lack of time available and lack of scheduling flexibility? Or is somebody just afraid to invest the time due to a lack of self-belief? These are things we have to interpret and kind of like untangle from the web of objections before we decide, is this a quote unquote legitimate 
objections, something that we really need to address and kind of like customize the offer around? Or is this something where we just need to do a little bit of motivational interviewing and we can dig a little bit deeper to create more trust to actually finalize the full offer that we're wanting to sell in the first place? Another thing to keep in mind here is sometimes an objection simply stems from a lack of understanding of the offer. A really powerhouse question you can always ask is, you know, one of the reasons why people develop a little bit of fear, uncertainty, around investing in something that feels really valuable for them is because they maybe don't exactly understand what all they'd be getting. Is there anything I can clarify for you surrounding myself, my job, or the offer? Like I'm a totally open book. A lot of times just recognizing, hey, I'm just human. I might not have explained everything totally perfectly or to the degree of detail that you would like to see. That can open up a lot of doors for just discussion. Something to remember is just that sometimes people don't understand exactly what they're getting and then they hear a high price tag or a super long timeline and they're like, I don't feel like I'm vibing with that because I don't even understand exactly what's on the table and what's going to be part of the deliverables package. So opening the door for that type of Q&A can be really helpful at this stage. So at this point, you've got a feel for the motivation of the person sitting in front of you and their readiness to change. You've also started to figure out is this legitimately the objection that I'm hearing or do we have an insecurity in another area that we just need to address in which case we can close the sale as per usual. So your third step is to start to address the objection leading with motivation and empathy. This is where the authenticity of your sales strategy really comes into play. As somebody who came into the coaching industry, talking about myself, who had literally no experience with sales, with business of any kind, was like really just figuring it out step by step by step as a fresh college graduate. I was very, very sensitive to that feeling of like pressuring someone into making a decision, but also I was very sensitive to the way that I was using my time, other people were using my time, and I'd get to this point in the call, and it was kind of like an internal battle for me, whether to be like empathetic and trust that somebody really needed me to be flexible with them, or to just get frustrated and feel like my time was getting wasted. I want to encourage you to always lead with empathy if you're trying to have really good client relationships because you may very well end up signing this person and if you were showing like a nasty side of your sales strategy in this moment because you didn't lead with empathy and didn't lead with the benefit of the doubt towards this person's situation I do think it can backfire on you it can ruin that relationship and in the end it can be the reason you don't close the sale so what I mean by leading with empathy is that if somebody comes to me they want to invest in a business mentorship but they hear the price and they're like, oh my gosh, like that is really more than I wanted to spend or than I thought I was going to have to spend. I know this is something that I need, but I really feel like that's going to be a stretch for me financially. The first thing I'm going to say is like, I completely understand and true story when I invested in my first mentor, not only did I not have the money to do so, even though I saw the value so clearly, I literally started crying on the floor of my living room on the nasty carpet in my dark little apartment and had a complete meltdown because I was like, this is the scariest thing ever. I understand what it feels like to be in your position. I just get it. First things first, you gotta empathize. I totally think that what you're saying and where you're coming from is valid. So then you wanna shift from empathy and kind of like that lower vibe, understanding but still a little bit lower vibration, like time in the call. You wanna shift from that into motivation. So you go from, I totally understand what it feels like to you know X, Y, and Z, like give your examples, make this specific to your niche, but, I think we can both agree based on this thing that you said, you know, you're giving specific examples, specific goals they want to achieve based on this thing that you're wanting to see within the next six months in your health, in your business, in your life, et cetera. I think you and I both know this is something that would be extremely valuable for you. In fact, you told me a little bit earlier on the call that you know this is something that you need and that's a part of my sales call strategy is to have people agreeing with you. Yes, this is valuable for me. Like, of course it's going to be. That's why they're there, but you get those verbal agreements. So you start to motivate. We both know this is something that you need. We both know that in the end, the money will be spent anyways on little micro solutions and little things here and there that don't really amount to anything cohesive. Like I know where you're at. I see where you want to go. I've told you, I know how we can get you there. And I 
think you and I both know it is well worth your money more than anything else right now to put an investment in that direction. And the thing with money and the thing with time are kind of the same, right? People are gonna spend their money anyways, whether it's on like little micro solutions that don't add up to much at all, or you know the time's gonna pass anyways, whether you're working on your goals or you're not. So it's encouraging and communicating to this potential client like, listen, the money and the time, like these are resources that you can choose to allocate. You're telling me that you have this ultimate goal for yourself. We know we can get you there and I think we'd be an amazing team. Let's talk about how we can make this possible for you working within your financial parameters or your time constraints or whatever the objection really is. The key component of this step of the process is to reiterate the goals that this person has. Your mission needs to be reminding again and again, reiterating repeatedly the goals that this person brought to you in the first place. So you need to keep your eye on the prize, keep their eyes on the prize, right? Why are they even here in the first place? It's not just to get into like a weird sales situation and to make them spend their money on you and your offers. It's not that at all. They're here to solve a problem. And when they get off the call with you, even if they save themselves from spending this money or dedicating this time, the problem still exists. So bringing that back, reminding them of the pain points they've shared with you and the solutions that are possible, painting that picture and making it very visual, like you really, really get it, that is your superpower at this stage in the process. And that leads me right into the fourth step of the process, which is to begin to customize the offer to this person's objections and needs without decreasing the value or the time. So what I mean by that is we are not at the point of downselling this person yet. We are now at the place to accommodate through customization that doesn't decrease, like I said, value or time. In other words, we're selling the exact same offer. We're just creating a little bit of wiggle room that more than anything helps this person to feel seen and understood. It doesn't really impact what we as a coach are gonna be able to create for them in the experience or what we receive compensation wise. And it's not gonna impact the value and the dedicated time that your client receives either. It's still a win-win for everybody is the ideal situation. So we've gone through the empathy situation, we've gone through the motivational piece, and now it comes down to, okay, we know this is valuable for you, we know this is something you wanna do, but I understand 100% where you're coming from with this objection. Let's work toward a solution that's gonna get you all the help and the value that you need, but that accommodates for your budget constraints or your timeline constraints. So by this point, the empathy is there. We understand where you're coming from, what your objections are. We're motivating you to understand. We see the vision, you see the vision, you know this is valuable. We're shifting into customization. We're shifting into how do I accommodate for your budgeting constraints, your timeline constraints? How do we make this something that works for you where you get all the value you're looking for, but on your terms? And in the end, it's really on my terms, their terms, like it's what I wanted in the first place, but it feels more customized to them. So this is where you as the business owner need to come in very, very prepared. It is essential when you get on any sales call from the very first one to your hundredth sales call that you understand very, very clearly what your options are. And I'm talking, when are your available start dates? How often are you planning to meet with clients? Is there any wiggle room on your end when it comes to scheduling? Are you able to space that timeline out at all? Do you have a secondary option that's like the same investment level, but gives a little bit of flexibility? Just determine like where your boundaries are there when it comes to payment plans, timeline stuff, you need to already know that in advance. Because what you don't wanna do is number one, come across like you don't know what you're talking about. Well, let me think of what payment plan would be manageable. Like I don't really know. You also don't wanna come across as as, well, whatever you want, just tell me whatever. And we'll just do like, literally, like it doesn't matter. Like you gotta have standards. You don't wanna just be pulling things out of your ass and not knowing what's going on because your client, your potential client can pick up on that clueless energy and it does not translate well when you are speaking about overcoming objections that they already had before they heard that. So you're asking questions like, is there a way we can break this investment down to better match your budgeting needs? Here are a few payment plan options that have worked for my most successful clients in the past. Let's talk about it. Same kind of question and answer can go for scheduling and really any objection that you may receive. Just know going in where your boundaries are and you're pretty much golden here. So final step of the process, you will have reached one of three outcomes at the end of addressing these objections, okay? 
Number one and our most ideal outcome is that you've worked through the stages of empathy, of motivation, of customization. You get to a place where you've customized a payment plan or a timeline or something within your business boundaries that matches your needs, the needs of your client, and you close the initial sale that you always wanted to close in the first place. And it feels like a win-win for everybody involved. Your second option, and this is where we get into a little bit more strategy, comes in the form of a down sell. So, you're going to think that my next step here is the follow up option, but no. When you are sitting on this initial consultation with somebody, this is when you have their utmost attention. You're never going to hold somebody's attention more than the first time they think to book in with you. The first time they're like, no, I'm motivated enough to stick my neck out and see what it might be like to work with a health coach, a business mentor, a life coach, a nutritionist, whatever it is. So if you are on that call and you feel that a no is imminent, you feel that the energy on the call is either going to lead to I just don't think this is the right time. I just don't think I have the budget. I really need to think about it as just an excuse to get off the call and never speak to you again. Using your intuition, like if that's what you're feeling, this is where you make the decision that it is more valuable that you sign this person on for something and be compensated for the time you've spent on this consultation and the relationship that you've built, giving you therefore the opportunity to upsell them into a full length or extended offer later. You believe it's more valuable to do that than to just throw your hands up and say, okay, if you don't want the whole shebang, you don't want the full, most expensive, longest offer, even if it's customized, whatever, we're not the right fit. You can do that. And I think that's more aligned with the advice you may hear given online. But to me, that is not how you build a business. You build a business by being accommodating within your own boundaries and not being afraid to accommodate when it is necessary. So down sells when you know what they are before you get on the call, you know, if it's a half length of program with a specific price attached and you know, all the things, if you know what that is, this is where you can honestly say, I totally understand where you're coming from. I think that this offer I'm presenting may be, you know, a little bit above budget or a little bit significantly above, you know, your time constraints. Why don't we start with insert down sell option and see how you like things from there. We'll address like X, Y, and Z specific goals, really be focused. You'll see a great transformation, but you can have things a little bit more manageable based on, you know, these things that you're struggling with. Now all these blank spaces I'm inserting here, like these are all decisions you need to make in your business. And I can make videos extended like this on sales calls and program development with a down sell option, things like that. If y'all are curious about that, you can always let me know in the comments, but I will say that in the interest of staying focused for today, these are decisions you make based on the offers you've developed and the sales call skills you are already utilizing. Now your third outcome, when you get to the end of a sales call and you've handled objections, we've talked about our other options, right? We close the sale, we do a down sell. You may just get to the end of the call and you may be looking at somebody who's like really trying to make it work. They're like, I just need to sit with my budget. I need to talk to my partner. We're gonna sit together, put our heads together and brainstorm how we can do this because genuinely, the budget is gonna be a struggle, but I want to make this work. When you're getting the vibe that this could be a great opportunity, don't just jump to the down sell. You have somebody in front of you where you feel the energy is very legitimate in the direction of, I wanna work with my partner or with a little bit of extra time to determine exactly how I can make this work. That is when you follow my signature follow-up strategy. And I can make an entire video on this, but the gist of this is when that happens, you say, absolutely, I will have an email in your inbox before the day is over with every detail of what we talked about, customized to your specific goals. And let's go ahead and set a follow-up call time right now. So you wanna set a time, I'm gonna say within the next two to four business days, don't give too much time, the sooner the better. You go ahead and book in on this call when you have all that attention, you book in your follow-up call, and then you send that customized email, make a template with like your program details in it, but that doesn't sound too scripted. Input the specific customizations from the call, get that sent out ASAP, and then immediately after the call, you send a very gratitude-filled you know, DM, text, however that casual form of communication was looking, send that out ASAP, it was so good to meet you, so good chatting, here's what's happening next, like see you on 
insert date of follow up. So you guys, that is my really in-depth summary of how you can address sales objections. I'm very much the coach who believes in being flexible, being accommodating, understanding, like coming to understand over time the common objections you're hearing from your ideal client base and learning from that data. Maybe it's something you tweak in your sales call or your application strategy. Maybe it's something you tweak about your offer. If it's just simply not sitting well with your ideal client base, maybe you adjust your niche to fit more of the client you want to work with, whatever it is, getting yourself to a place where you're closing the most calls you possibly can once you get to that point is going to save you a ton of time, really bring you the most high value clients because the time on the call is the most effective and just going to make the whole experience a lot more effective as far as business goes. So I really hope you guys found this to be helpful. I will link all of my social media for you guys down in the description box. I post so much content every single day. And if you guys are not already listening to my podcast, the first million podcast, and you are interested in financial freedom, the financial abundance side of owning a business, financial education and literacy, things like that. Highly recommend you check that out. If you subscribe to this channel, I post a podcast episode every single Monday. We may be transitioning to alternating a YouTube video and a podcast episode every other week if I do get into these longer trainings, but we will see. Either way, I will link everything down below. You should totally get connected with me on TikTok for both my coaching and my podcast account. I post exclusive content there every single day. I love you guys the absolute most. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe. It really supports the channel, shows me that you guys like to learn here in this capacity. It really supports my channel, shows me that you guys like to learn in this format and just continues to support me on this platform. And I really appreciate it. So I believe in you guys so, so much more than you even know. I truly hope to meet some of you guys who are hoping to start businesses on a consultation one day. I will link my general interest form for marketing services as well as mentorship down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Mwah.